Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are looking at the Fossils and Archaeology Revival mod. And I'm going to show you how to, well, start off. And we're going to go through the series. And we're going to progressively get to more and more things with this. So first off, it's just how to set up your analyzing stuff. How to actually spawn the damn thing. How to... Start your museum if you so want to. So that's what we're going to go over first here. And then we will move on to possibly caring for stuff. Because there is a Dynapedia in this game. Right here. So we will eventually go over into that. Which will probably be next episode. But in the start of this. I have set up a small tutorial place. Like I do with every other tutorial. Like my Batania. Uh, whatever the fuck else I have. Anyway. So today, we're going to go and start this, Fossils and Archaeology. First thing that you're going to want to do is obviously find fossils. This is what a fossil block looks like. You use a pickaxe to mine, it looks like stone with some something protruding out of it. So, we have a pickaxe here. But wait, what if you want something specific? Like maybe you want some plant, or maybe you want a fossil of an animal? Well, don't worry, we have the Archaeologist Enchantment and the Paleontologist Enchantment. So these increase your chances of finding things like biofossil. Or so biofossils, these things right here. Those little dudes. And also, I believe they're just plant fossils. Yeah, just plant fossils here. So you can look for any of those there. So, I don't have an anvil with me, so this will just kind of give you a representation of what you're going to be doing here. So, you're just going to mine these. And sometimes you get bones, plant fossils, biofossils. You're going to want to mine a lot of these because our next step is going to require quite a lot of them. So, let's go ahead and wander over here. Which, first thing I should mention is since we have some bones now, if you do find any of these biofossils, you can right click them. And you can make little dudes here if you don't like them. You just hit them and you get your thing back. And you can find all sorts of different ones like this. And then if you have bones, you can grow them. I actually got a ton in here. You can grow your fossil. They don't have any AI or anything. They just kind of look around every now and then. So I guess they do have some. But for as many textures as there are for the dinosaur being grown you can grow it that much and if you break it you'll get the stuff back and I believe if you also overgrow it you can also get the stuff back no I think I just hit it so there you go moving on though if I set this today we have the analyzer up here so the analyzer what this does is I'm actually gonna put my stuff in here but the analyzer is the central item that you're going to need for this. This is how you get your DNA from everything. And remember when I said that you need a lot of fossils? You need a lot of fucking fossils. So, with four iron ingots, a biofossil, and a relic scrap, placing this into a crafting table like this gets you an analyzer. With your analyzer, this is what the GUI of it looks like. You would put your scrap, or not your scraps, your um, fossils in here. And then it would either pop out some DNA, or it'll pop out just pure shit. So, the reason I said you need a lot of these is because there's a high chance of it popping out pure shit. So, we're going to throw our biofossils in here. This doesn't require any redstone energy or anything. It's just going to go in here. But, as you can see... You can get just sand dye, and then you can actually get like some fossil spurs and all that. So, on our first one, we got this, which is a Peleosaurus thing, and then on the second one, we got fucking sand. Um, we can put our tar fossil in here, and then our plant fossil in here, but for the first time, that's a first that I've ever gotten one of these on the first try, and yeah. It fills up these things really quickly. You're probably going to have to empty them out if you keep getting really awful things. So you can probably add a hopper underneath here, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, let's go into creative and test it out. 
So if you really wanted to, you could add a hopper below, which would go into a chest, and then you can collect the items from there. Good, they thought about how that would become cluttered very quickly. But since we don't have anything in there, let's check this. Volcanic rock and bone meal. And over here, we got some plant seeds. Now, you can't plant these. Not even on tilled ground. You have to wait for the next step. So since we have everything in our inventory, let's move on to the next step, which is creating this culture vat. A culture vat is how you're going to grow your fossils, your seeds, your abominations. So to do that, it is four lime green glass, specifically lime green, three iron on the bottom, the lime green on the side, sides, water in the middle, and then a slime ball on the top. It can be from Tinker's Construct. You can use any of those slime balls if you're playing with it. And then you get a culture vat. Now, for the culture vat to run, you need something called Biogoo. Biogoo is this strange substance that nobody knows where it came from, but to make it, you have to have these items. An egg, some milk, some wheat, and rotten flesh. And you can arrange them in any other order. But on the crafting recipe, it just shows the milk, the rotten flesh, and that. So, also, on the, um, if you're using not enough items, or too many items, it will show that you would usually use some other egg. You can use the regular egg, and it will still make bio goo, and then you get your bucket back. Don't worry. Moving over, now that we have our bio goo, our DNA, and then some seeds, we have our culture vat. Now, I didn't actually intend on getting a... Um, DNA here, so I went ahead and I got a Gallimimus and a Sarko Suckass over here. So, we can also put the um, seeds in here if we really wanted to, so I might actually just rob some bio goo out of here, plop that in there, and we'll just get some seeds in here. And then it'll fossilize those, which some of them maybe can't be. Maybe I'm missing a step there, but for right now, we're just going to do with our dinosaur, so we'll get our Galilemus in here. And then our Sarko Suckass. And then you should start biogooing. It's very slow, I will mind you. But it does eventually get there. So if one of these things do eventually end up breaking, and you get out um, a congressman. Oh, I mean a um, monstrosity. Nah, they're the same thing sometimes. Um, you will eventually have to kill that thing where you can keep it. And then you'll get this failure source flesh, which can also be turned into bio goo if you substitute that for rotten flesh. But that's if the thing breaks. So, this is about done almost. It takes a long time. I will mention that. It's probably five minutes. Maybe. So, once this is done, it will run out of the bio goo that you put. It'll just run out of one bio goo that you put in there. And... It takes a very long time. Probably stuck that in there at ten. It's about ten... Something. And then you're almost done, too. And then you get the Galilemus egg... Which you will then get an achievement, eggs. And luckily we also succeeded in the egg production of the sucky OS or whatever the hell, sarco ass thing. So, you have eggs. And now you wait to hatch them. This is the most fun of the mod is that you wait to hatch your eggs and now you must defend them from congressmen. So now that the sun is falling and the rain has stopped, I will now conclude the video because next episode, once these fellas hatch, I will show you how to take care of your brand new dinosaur. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and I hope to see all of you in the next episode. Goodbye everyone and stay safe out there.